All right, it is a very wet July morning and it's looking pretty hazy out, but I think it's gonna be a good night. I've got some plans to go after a new nebula from the backyard tonight once it gets dark. But most of the evening I'll be out of the house as I have some dinner plans that I'm gonna be going to. So I wanna make sure everything's set up so I have to do as little as possible once I get home tonight and I can just get up and running on the nebula that I plan to photograph. Everything is all packed in and inside from last night because there was a storm that was forecasted to roll through, which it definitely did. Everything is soaking wet right now and it just rained, but the forecast calls for clear skies for the rest of today and into the whole night tonight, which it definitely looks like it is now completely clear. There's a few clouds here and there, but the whole rest of the sky is looking perfectly clear. Besides the haze that's coming through right now, it's looking like it's going to be a very good night tonight. I'm going to spoil the surprise and say that the nebula I'm going after tonight is the Dumbbell Nebula in the constellation Volpecula, which I'm standing in the spot that I normally take pictures from. This is where my setup is always set up. And this is where Cygnus rises, so this is to the west. Polaris is in those trees, normally right there, and then I get a brief hour or so to photograph the Milky Way. And the Dumbbell Nebula, as you can see, would go right where the sun is, which is a very, very small length of time to image anything. So I'm gonna walk around and see if I can find a little bit of a better spot in my yard to go after the Dumbbell Nebula that I normally wouldn't set up in. I actually haven't photographed this nebula before. I've done it a long time ago and I've messed around with it over the years, getting 30 minutes here and there. So I definitely know like what its brightness is and all that stuff, but overall I haven't gotten the experience of completing an image of the Dumbbell Nebula. So I wanna get that under my belt here tonight. The reason I haven't photographed it before is obviously because of where it is in the night sky. As you can see from my yard, it's not in the most ideal spot to get a bunch of photos of it. So um, this is gonna be a challenge. I might have to go after it for multiple nights, but we'll see what it's looking like after tonight. And then if I have to add on nights in the future, then I'll just put that at the end of the video. All right, I did a little bit of searching and walking around, planning with the apps on my phone. And I think that this spot right here in my yard is going to be the best option for photographing the Dumbbell Nebula tonight. So this is just further back in the yard in the back corner behind my clubhouse here. And the Dumbbell Nebula will rise in that little pocket and go across. So that would go from about 9 p.m. to 3 in the morning there, which is a lot better than just 10 to 11. It's not perfect, and that's for sure, but in this yard, you gotta sort of take what you can get. There's a lot of trees, as I'm sure you've seen here. So if I can get more than four hours on a nebula per night, I'm taking that for what I can get because that is a lot of time from this yard. I'm gonna get myself set up in this new spot here, and then I'll go over what I'm shooting with tonight to photograph the Dumbbell Nebula. been a couple hours. I'm now fully set up. I waited a little while to finish getting myself set up because the sun was burning down on me. So I waited until it was in the trees a little bit to finish up. For reference, that was about 11.45 in the morning when I started this video. And now it's closer to 4 p.m. It's about 3.50 right now. So like I said, I am almost all the way set up. I just have to polar line and focus everything. So that should be the last two steps that I just have to do once I get back home at around 11 p.m. I'm leaving at around 6 p.m. 
so in about two hours. So hopefully I'll get a lot of imaging time on the Dumbbell Nebula tonight. It rises from the trees, like I said, at about nine, so I'll be missing about two to two and a half hours of imaging time, but I'll still be left with plenty of time to get, hopefully, a great image. The Dumbbell Nebula is a lot smaller in our night sky than a lot of your other typical summertime nebulae. The telescope and camera setup I have tonight is not perfect for these planetary nebulae, but I'm hoping I'll be able to get a decent shot. It'll fill up only a small amount of the frame, but I know there's a lot of that dim outer shell that hopefully I'll be able to collect, which will make it look a little bit bigger. I can always crop in a little bit too, but you don't want to do that too much because you don't want to lose too much resolution. The specific telescope that I have set up tonight is the Skywatcher ED72. It has a focal length of 420 millimeters, which means it's a wide field telescope. Meanwhile, the camera that's on the back of it is the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro, which is a color astronomy camera with a sensor that's a little bit cropped in, so it's better than using a DSLR, that's for sure. As always, sitting in between my camera and my telescope is my trusty Optolong L Extreme light pollution filter. It's a narrow band filter and shooting from the Bortle 9 city skies of Chicago, I really need it to be able to get the images that I get. And if I'm being honest, astrophotography from the city really wouldn't be possible without it. All of this stuff is mounted on top of the Skywatcher EQM35 equatorial mount. If you're new to astrophotography, I use this mount to track the night sky and make sure the stars don't move out of my frame while I'm taking pictures. If there's one thing that I'm worried about for tonight, it is the Wi-Fi signal that my telescope setup will be able to get from this specific spot. The reason I don't move my setup around a lot is because I wirelessly remote in to a computer on top of my setup from inside or from my phone. This makes sure that I keep my expensive laptop safe because bringing it out in those really bitterly cold winter months is not ideal. Now, in order to remote into this computer, I need a strong Wi-Fi connection. The spot that I have set up normally is on the very edge of being in and out of the Wi-Fi signal. So when my telescope is pointed in a certain direction, I sometimes lose that connection. So I'm really worried about setting it up behind this clubhouse here, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to pull through and get that Wi-Fi signal. If not, it's not a big deal. I can still connect to my phone's hotspot while I'm near it. I just have to be outside to see what's going on, which isn't the biggest problem, but you know, you want to be able to check on what your setup's doing from inside before you go to bed or in the winter months when you can get imaging as early as 6 p.m. while you're eating dinner. Astrophotographers tend to get very excited in the summer months because that means the constellation Cygnus is rising in the northern hemisphere. Accompanied with Cygnus is a bunch of bright nebulae that you can photograph, which is why a lot of astrophotographers tend to call the summer season nebula season. While this is great and I love summer, when you get to end of July, early August, as for me at least, it can tend to become a little bit tiresome. I photographed everything in Cygnus that I can possibly photograph and I'm just anxiously anticipating those fall constellations and the targets that come with them, such as the Andromeda Galaxy, the California Nebula, or the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. So I'm hoping with these next couple videos that I'll be putting out, they will serve as a sort of last hurrah of summer. And then after I'm done with the Dumbbell Nebula and the next couple targets that I'm imaging, I can move on to some of those fall targets and maybe get a little bit of an early head start on them. So it's getting to be about that time now. It's close to when I need to leave. So I'm gonna cover everything up and bring all the stuff that I don't need to be outside inside so that as soon as I get home, once it's all dark, I can get going on the Dumbbell Nebula. <laughs> I am back from dinner. As expected, it's about 11.30 right now, and I've polar aligned my telescope set up and got it all connected to the Wi-Fi. I've had no issues with the computer so far. It's maybe been a tad bit slower, but it's been perfectly usable, and I was almost in perfect polar alignment just by setting the mount down randomly facing north, so that was pretty easy. Currently, my auto guider PHD2 is calibrating right now, and it should be good to go in one to two minutes, and then I will set my telescope on the Dumbbell Nebula. The 
plan is three minute exposures and with how it's looking right now, I should be able to get about five to six hours of total exposure time. I'm thinking that amount of exposure time should be able to make a perfectly fine image of the Dumbbell Nebula. It's just that the seeing conditions right now are pretty terrible. The haze is a lot more visible than I thought it would be. The, I can barely see any stars right now. The only stars I can see are Vega and a couple other of the brighter ones. But the test exposure I just did on the Dumbbell Nebula when I was messing around slewing to stuff looked great. So I'm just praying that the skies don't get any more smoky as the night goes on. If you're unfamiliar with or curious about what software I'm using to remote into this mini PC I have right here, it is called AnyDesk. It's free for Apple iPhones, I know, and Windows devices. What I just did now was I set the quality mode to speed. You can set it from a variety of different settings, and speed helps for slower network connections or if you're farther away from the router like I am right now. You can switch back and forth very easily, so if you need to check out the individual pixels in your image, you can set it back to quality for a quick second before setting it back to whatever mode you had it on before. All right, like I said, it seemed to have gotten a lot hazier. I'm going to show you guys. So this is what we're looking at right now in terms of how many stars you can see. That up there is Vega, and that's about all you can see. You can see a couple other of the brighter stars in there, but other than that, that's about it. The brightness of the Dumbbell Nebula really does come in handy on a night like this. I know that the outer shell of the nebula is a lot dimmer, but I'm sure I'll be able to get the core of the nebula looking just fine. If I was going after something fainter, I might as well have just packed it in or set my scope on a different target. But yeah, that is looking like it's going to be about it for tonight's video. As I've always said, I hope that the image that you're about to see of the Dumbbell Nebula has a little bit more meaning after you've seen the story of the night that I captured it and what I did to get this image and I hope it inspires you to shoot your own astrophotography pictures if you are from a light polluted city like I am and with that being said I will see you guys in the next video